All right, today we're going to talk about the most critical steps that you need to take right after someone has had a stroke to improve their balance. Right. Keep them upright. Stay tuned. Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi, I'm Bob Shrub, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. And together we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. All right, as we already uh, hinted towards, Brad, we're going to talk about balance right. after someone has had a stroke. And the most critical thing you need to work on first is seated balance. Right. If you're not able to balance in the seated position, you're not going to be able to stand in balance. So right. this is the first step. That's why it's critical we get this established yep. before we go to the next step. And Brad's got a bunch of exercises you can do to start. Okay, now this is, we don't know, I don't know where the person is uh, that you're working with, but we're going to start from the basics, okay? Now here Bob is going to act like he's had a stroke. He's leaning to his involved side, which is his right side. I might put his hand down here just to get that arm working a little bit to start with, but this is to the point where he's going to fall over, so I need to assist him, okay? Now I'm actually going to get here so you can see better, but I do like working with people from this position as well they've had a stroke and we're going to hold that person up and a lot of verbal cues okay Bob I need you to get up tall and I'm going to help him out push with this hand Bob there you go and now hold it right there hold 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 and what will happen sometimes is they'll continue to go over but we need to continue to work on verbal cues tactile in other words have the hand push down in the here push into the shoulder that's weak we're trying to wake up this side wake up everything over here so it's good to give some physical cues as well as the verbal cues and another, the other thing is you want to make sure you're on a firm surface right Brad? right we're going to start out on a firm surface not on a bed um, a few other things you can do is you can put a bigger mirror if you have one on wheels you may or a wall mirror that you can get in front of the person so they can see themselves because they may not be aware that they're tipping over but visually if they see it it's going to help them get upright because they're aware of in it. In my experience is it, it helps. Right. I mean and you were telling of an instance in which it didn't. Right. I, I had uh, one person she did not want the mirror in front of her because she saw how she looked after the stroke. One side was different, and it psychologically it really was depressing for her, so we did not use a mirror with her. So it's one of the precautions. Um, okay, so. But I have a patient right now, without a doubt, it's helped. Okay. She, she, she corrects herself yep. when she sees herself yep. in the mirror. And you'll figure that out quickly. You'll yeah. probably know by knowing the person, okay? Um, once they get to the person where they can sit up in this position and you can let go, Okay, and Bob's holding it there, and we're going to go for, you know, 20, 30 seconds, and it's kind of indefinitely. Nice job, Bob. We're going to go to the next step, and that is going to be, we're not going to do it here, but you're going to imagine you're going to put the person on a bed, because you get out of bed in the morning, you have to sit up on the edge of the bed. Sitting on the edge of a bed is much harder than a firm surface like that because you have this soft surface and you may get this going on and so on that soft edge of the bed sitting up okay Bob let's sit up tall okay if you're gonna if he starts going this way hand over here to hold yourself up same thing as what we went through in the first spot except for we're on that soft surface just like a bed or using a bed itself the bed that they actually have is a good idea okay going to the step three once they're able to sit under the bed with good control then we're going to start pushing in all four directions in other words straight from the front from the back right side and left side okay okay bob stand up tall now i'm going to push you and don't let me tip you over i'm going to push right on the sternum here hold 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 and relax good job bob now i'm going to push this way hold i'm pushing this direction pushing him forward he's doing oh hope come on bob push 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 there you go we're going to hold it for five to ten seconds and relax good job so if he did good forward and backwards now I'm going to go this direction because I know that's his strong side. I'm going to push this way. Hold, 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 Bob. Okay. Oh, he's tipping, he's tipping. Good. He'll come back up, Bob. Okay. Now I'm going to go this direction and see if he can hold this better. And he's stronger this way. Okay. He's holding good, which makes sense because he normally tips this way. Now, Bob, I'm going to push here again. Now you hold me. Push against the side. I'm going to tap. I'm going to give verbal cues. Push, push, push. Come on, Bob. You can do it. And I'm going to let him work into it. I'm going to help him out. Again, push, 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 Bob. And this might take a few days, a week or two, whatever it takes. You need to get that stabilization against just a static or an isometric push and hold. Okay? Once you get to the point where I can hold, Bob, no matter what, you're going to stand like a, or sit like a statue. I'm sorry. Push. 
push, hold strong, don't let me move you, do not let me move you, Bob, and now look at that, he's strong, we've worked to that phase, okay? Now the next phase, okay, Bob, just sit there, now don't let me move you, and I'm going to do some what we call perturbations, or pushes and uh, forces on him without him knowing it, so I'm going to get a little push here, okay, and oh, he's holding it, Bob, I want you to be strong, be strong, and now he knows I'm doing it, so he's stronger, plus he may be working off, everything's working together. And then without him knowing, I'm gonna come from this side, he doesn't know it, I'm gonna push here. Oh, he held pretty good this way, so that's good. Okay, sometimes it's just he knows that you're gonna do it, so he's more aware of it. Either way, you're working the mind, you're working the body, and if you can do perturbations or pushes from any direction, and they can maintain that, Okay, it might be if I push here and he gets that sway that way, we're gonna keep working. Okay, Bob, hold strong, be strong, be strong, hold it, hold it, there you go. He's getting better, getting stronger. And once that's established, they can sit strong, they can uh, work against isometrics, perturbations. Then we're going into the dynamic exercise. This gets to be where it's fun. Okay, what you can do, now this is gonna depend on the involved arm, how good it is. Mm -hmm. If that arm is good enough to hold on to a ball and throw it, that's really good. We're gonna work with a ball toss, okay? Good, now this is working that core balance. And to be honest with you, if someone's had a stroke, their arm is probably not gonna be good enough to throw a ball, would you say that's true, right. Bob? Right. And that's where you, you may wanna do as an alternative is maybe just some reaching with the other arm. Sure, So let's right. say this is an evolved arm. You might have them reach up this way, and then reach across midline. Sure. And then reach down. Right, and, and you might give them a target. The ball, yeah. Can, can you reach out here, Bob, and hold it? And if you can hold it, let's see if you can go over this way. It's getting hard, mm -hmm. it's getting hard. And here you probably need two people, one person holding the ball, another person to help the person out in case they start to tip. Okay, then we're gonna go over this way. There you go, in here. And then you wanna get four corners. I like to go here, here, now lower. This is gonna be the hardest one yep, right down here. Yep, down there, and then over here. Okay, and you get a system going. One, two, three, four, and then break it up, different things. Maybe five or six repetitions on each corner. Okay, now the other thing about working with stroke, stroke patients as well as any patient, is you gotta have a little humor with it, right Bob? Right. Yeah, and so if, if, if I was working with Bob and he had a stroke, I know he's a Viking fan. I'm a Packer fan, so I'm not going to take the, the Packer ball and have him reach for it because you know what he's going to do? He's going to punch it, and maybe that'll be, maybe that'll good, be good therapy as well. Yeah. And then if I'm going to use this Viking ball, I'm not going to hold it. I'm going to throw it at him. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We're both weeping because we both were in the playoffs, and we both had lo uh, bad playoff losses. Yeah, they uh, were close games, close games right to the very right last the end, second, so and we're still crying. We both had good years. So. <laughs> All right, take care, and good luck with your... Watching.